Let's talk about the nine best foods to get all your fat-soluble vitamins. What's the difference between fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins? There's a huge difference, okay, uh, at the cellular level. Um, fat-soluble vitamins penetrate the cell membrane and they go right into the nucleus, okay? They go right into the nucleus and they connect with receptors that can activate certain genes. Whereas water-soluble vitamins are more like coenzymes. They're kind of like helper molecules that don't go that far into the nucleus. So these fat-soluble vitamins are very, very important. Vitamin A, D, E, K1, K2. And there are also other things that are fat-soluble in like your vegetables and things. Phytonutrients, right? Especially carotenoids like lutein, zeaxanthin, which are essential for your eye and they have anti-cancer properties. And there's benefits of chlorophyll in certain plants. And so what you need to know about fat-soluble vitamins is that like dissolves light. You need to add some fat to absorb these fat-soluble nutrients, thus adding olive oil to your salad to extract fat nutrients. And also when you take the fat-soluble vitamins, it's important to maybe either consume them with a meal or add a little bit of oil or fat to them to increase your absorption. Unfortunately, manufacturing companies to extract these fat-soluble nutrients, as well as uh, certain oils, like to make um, like your salad dressing out of soy or corn or canola oil. They have to use, um, they don't use fat, they use solvents like hexane, for example. So there are certain chemicals that have properties to help dissolve and break down and extract these fat-soluble elements. Now, the other really important thing to know about fat-soluble nutrients in general is this. To absorb those nutrients, um, they are dependent on bile, okay, from your gallbladder. Now, the liver makes bile, and it's stored in the gallbladder, and without bile, you cannot absorb these nutrients. So bile is necessary. If you have your gallbladder out, if you have a sluggish gallbladder, if you have problems with your liver, let's say of a fatty liver or whatever, that is going to diminish the bile and diminish your absorption of those nutrients. And you may not even know you have a subclinical deficiency for quite some time, unless you understand all the different um, signs and symptoms of those deficiencies. But bile that's made by your liver, okay, gets stored in the gallbladder. And then that acts on the fatty food that you eat to break down some of the fat to a certain level, not 100%, just to a certain level, kind of emulsifies the fat. So then your pancreas, specifically the enzyme lipase, can come in there and break down that fat to the level of where you need it so you can absorb it into your intestine. If you have problems with the pancreas and you don't have that enzyme, that could be the other reason why you're not absorbing these fat-soluble nutrients. And one of these symptoms for a pancreatic problem, like even pancreatitis, would be skid marks on in your toilet bowl, okay? And your stool floats. So those are two indications that you're not absorbing the fat from your food. It's a simple way to identify. But also if you have gut damage, okay, let's say you have scar tissue in your the lining of your intestine, or you have inflammation, you're not going to be able to absorb the fat-soluble nutrients nearly as well, if at all. And so you see a lot of people that are deficient in these nutrients, even though they're taking them because there's gut damage deep inside. The other thing you need to know is that these vitamins, both fat-soluble and water-soluble come in complexes. They don't come as one nutrient. So anytime you take one of something and not the others in the normal complex, you can throw out the balance of these nutrients and throw out the absorption. For example, let's take vitamin E. You have alpha, beta, delta, gamma, tocopherols. You also have the same thing with the tocotrienols. And then in that complex, you have selenium. So every vitamin complex comes with its own mineral as well. Vitamin A helps you differentiate uh, certain cells. So in other words, if you're deficient in vitamin A, you can have cells that form on your eye that are not part of the eye. 
and on your skin, both externally, outside, and internally, all the skin on the inside of your body. If you have uh, like rough, dry skin, that could be a vitamin A deficiency because the cells are not reproducing the cells that should be there. They're reproducing a kind of a rougher version of that uh, cell. Vitamin A is really, really important for your immune system, okay? Especially for viruses. And I think it's not really known and people don't talk about it, but this is why you know, you should not go on a low fat diet to help your immune system. You need to go on a higher fat diet to help your immune system. Fertility is dependent on vitamin A. Uh, a lot of times people talk about the toxicity of vitamin A, but what about the deficiency of vitamin A and what that can produce um, for this growing baby? Because remember, these fat soluble vitamins go right into the DNA and they affect the genes and the chromosomes. Um, especially for growth and development of a child. But hands down, retinol is the best form of vitamin A. That's the most bioavailable. It gets absorbed versus the beta carotene, which you know they also call vitamin A, but they don't really tell you. Only a very tiny bit of beta carotene gets absorbed. Um, so you're not going to get your you're needed and required vitamin A from beta carotene. So this is why plant-based beta carotene, well, it's good for certain things, but it's definitely not going to give you the, the retinol, the active um, type of vitamin A that you really need. All right, uh, let's talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D is, you know, it acts like a hormone more than a vitamin. And uh, it's very similar to cortisol because it can help you with inflammation. It's involved with the immune system. And it's actually, made by your own skin. You can make vitamin D from UV radiation from the sun. And what's interesting, people are scared about too much UV causing skin cancer, but you need UV to make vitamin D, which actually prevents skin cancer. So I, I really think it's the, um, the burning effect of the sun, which creates the damage. So if you're out there in the sun and you just don't let yourself get burnt, it's going to be totally fine because you're going to get enough vitamin D, as well as other benefits from the sun, like infrared, which helps build up your melatonin, which is a very fascinating um, molecule. All right. Bone health, immune health can help lower your blood pressure, can increase your mood. It's an anti-inflammatory. It gets rid of pain. Okay. So a very important vitamin. Vitamin E, uh, very important for neurological conditions, as well as your muscles. If you're deficient in vitamin E, you're going to find that your muscles are just so weak. Um, so they strengthen your muscle and also very important in heart, okay, heart health, both in the heart muscle as well as in the inside of the arteries that go to the heart. So if there's a deficiency of vitamin E, you're not going to be able to have that protection against oxidation, things like that. The heart tends to cramp more than it should because of the relationship between vitamin E and helping you carry more oxygen load in the heart. On the top of every mountain peak that people climb, you'll see uh, empty bottles of vitamin E because it helps them with more oxygen in higher altitudes. All right, vitamin K1, clotting. If you're deficient in vitamin K1, you can have problems even um, synthesizing uh, DNA. So it goes right down to the core. And then, of course, vitamin K2, vital directing calcium where it should be going. It helps you transport calcium from the wrong place to the right place, okay? Now, these fat-soluble vitamins help you absorb certain minerals, like vitamin A helps you absorb iodine. Vitamin D helps you absorb calcium by a factor of 20x. That's a lot. So all you need is a little bit of vitamin D to really increase your calcium. If you don't have enough vitamin D, you're not going to absorb too much calcium. And then vitamin K2, like I said, helps transport the calcium. So it works with vitamin D3. And I always recommend that these come together if you're going to take them as a supplement. Now, these foods I'm going to talk about, um, I want to just tell you, you're going to get these fat-soluble vitamins a lot more if it's pasture-raised, grass-fed, wild-caught, okay? Because when these animals are fed grains, okay, the vitamin E gets destroyed. And if someone tells you, you can get your vitamin E from grains, the problem is you have to grind the grain. You're not going to eat 
just grains by themselves. You're gonna to to grind the grain. And as soon as you expose it to oxygen and sunlight, it's going to be destroyed shortly after that. So grains are not a good source of vitamin E. All right, let's talk about the foods. Egg yolk, okay? Egg yolk, hands down, is like a fat-soluble complex supplement, okay? You're gonna get every single fat-soluble nutrient you need, including vitamin E. Number two, cod liver, okay, as well as cow liver oil. If you've never had cod liver, I suggest you try it. It's actually, it's kind of like, it's not that fishy. It doesn't taste, you know, bad at all, but it has a unique taste. I like it, but it has a consistency of like pudding, but it's just loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, as well as these fat-soluble vitamins, uh, specifically vitamin A and vitamin D and omega-3. And you can also do the cod liver oil, either as itself uh, or in a little pearl. Um, one of the problems I do notice when people take it is they tend to burp more with it. So there is a solution. You can get cod liver oil as a powder, okay? And um, it's, you don't get the burping. You don't have to taste anything. And I'll put a link down below for that information if you want to get it in a capsule, okay? Now, uh, fatty fish is another really good source of these fat soluble nutrients, okay? Vitamin A, D, E, K1, K2, as well as omega-3 fatty acids. All right, number four, fish eggs. Now, you might not like the taste of fish eggs, but you can get them as supplements. But out of all the things that are good for women who are pregnant um, that want to help create this amazing uh, baby, Fish eggs are at the top of the list, as well as women trying to become more fertile or men becoming more fertile, this will do it. All right, number five, liver, okay? And other organ meats. And it's loads of vitamin A and vitamin D and E and K and all the other fat-soluble nutrients. You don't need much, okay? But uh, this is should be number one. Number six, poultry fat. I do not recommend consuming chicken unless it has the skin on it, okay? And the fat, the amount of fat-soluble nutrients in the skin is fantastic. You have vitamin A, D, E, as well as K. And by the way, the chicken thigh has the most vitamin E, which is interesting. Shellfish, really good for fat-soluble nutrients as well as the trace minerals. Number eight, cheese and cream, okay? European cheese is the best. Usually in America, we consume more um, pasteurized cheese, okay? But in Europe, they have a lot of uh, raw cheeses that are just amazing. And cream, okay? Now, I'm not talking about ultra-pasteurized. I'm talking about if you could find some raw cream, like I did down the street. I found a farm that has amazing cream, and I get the cream every single week. And of course, now we're getting two quarts of cream every single week for my wife and myself, because I'm finding it so delicious and it satisfies me so much. I mean, we're literally consuming, like I'm consuming like a quart of it a week by myself and my wife's doing the other quart, but it's great in coffee. It's great in foods. It's also great just to put with um, walnuts or even a little bit of berries with a little couple drops of stevia. Amazing, amazing stuff, but I'm not gonna recommend consuming that much cream, pasteurized. You can put it in your, your coffee, but I tell you, there's nothing better than raw cream. All right, then we get number nine, grass-fed butter. I mean, it's loaded with vitamin A, vitamin D, E, K1, and definitely K2. Now, before you go, I wanna tell you a little story about myself because um, when I do these videos, uh, a lot of times I'm talking about myself, my own health problems. I can relate because I've had just about every single health problem that probably you had, okay? And one of the problems I had, which I think I had, I'm pretty sure, was something called osteomalacia. And I wanna just tell you a little bit about it because osteomalacia is like rickets, which is a vitamin D deficiency for kids, but osteomalacia is a vitamin D deficiency as an adult that affects the bones, okay? Now, I think I started developing this in ninth grade. It just wasn't like a rickets, but it was definitely 
the symptoms of osteomalacia, which would be soft bones, okay? And also it can affect your teeth. I had really bad teeth. I had to go to the dentist all the time. I craved butter as a child trying to desperately get these, uh, these nutrients, but I just did not have a clue of what was going on. I think it started uh, in track in ninth grade when I joined the team and I noticed my pelvis in my lower back was so in pain, it wouldn't recover no matter what. And I walked with a, a weird gait and I had tremendous muscle spasm. And that was a severe vitamin D deficiency. But I was out in the sun a lot, right? So hang in there, I'm gonna tell you where that, I think that came from. So I had spine problems. And then as I went into wrestling, and then 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, wrestling, both starving myself, trying to get into a certain weight, as well as eating pure junk food, right? And I had a lot of gallbladder issues. How do I know that? Because I had mostly right shoulder pain, which is totally gallbladder related. And I went to get it treated so many times by the chiropractor and it never fully, you know, was stabilized. That was my gallbladder problem early on. And it just so happens that that bile and that gallbladder is needed to absorb these fat soluble vitamins, primarily vitamin D, to help with bone health. And also vitamin D is behind immune strength. I can't tell you how many times I would get a sore throat. Several times a year, I was constantly getting sick all the time. That was low vitamin D. I also had leg weakness. I remember in Wisconsin walking through the snow and my legs just so heavy. I didn't know what the heck that was. That was a vitamin D deficiency. So as I progressed in wrestling, okay, I did really good at the beginning of the season. And of course, terrible at the end of the season, I did end up going to state. And what was fascinating is that here I was, peak health, went to state, I go back home the next week, wrestling my little brother, okay, my little brother, who was a lot younger, and end up fracturing my leg from wrestling my little brother, which is impossible to do unless you had soft bones. Then I go into college and I start wrestling. I think within the first week, I end up fracturing my neck. I mean, with not that much force. So I, I literally had very soft bones at the time because one of the symptoms is you fracture bones easily. And the reason I'm telling you this is just because the importance of this knowledge of not just the food, but your gallbladder, what foods you should eat, what foods you should stay away from, identifying the early symptoms. If I only would have known what I was missing early on and what to do about it, it would have saved a lot of years of unnecessary gallbladder pain that lasted probably the next I don't know, 15 years after that until I finally figured out what it was. So since we're on the topic of fat-soluble vitamins, the next best video for you to watch would be the one on the gallbladder. I put it right here, check it out.